When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. So I was at the AT&T store the other day, and um, so I had to add a phone and a tablet because we got a new guy. And every time I'm in there, and I've been in there a million times, we've we've got a bunch of lines, but I always get the same question from the the customer service representative. They say, how much storage do you want? Your options are 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes. And I always have the same question. It's like, well, I mean, wh- what do you think? Like I, um, I take pictures, you know, I, you know, most of my stuff that I use is cloud-based like service Titan. And I'm trying to go into that. Like they know what service Titan is. And they're like, oh, I don't know if you don't, if you don't do like, if you don't play games or something like that, then you don't need a, a bunch of storage. So, and I always go with, 256 like that's the one in the middle and that perspective there when they offer me options I, even though i've been in there 30 times to buy 30 different phones <laughs> and lines i still don't know what to say but i'm glad that there are options there and i always gravitate be- towards the middle because that sounds like the safe bet you know what i mean yeah yeah, it always sounds like the same. I mean, even like I, I like to use the TV example when I'm talking to people about options. And it's like the way I like to look at options is we got to meet our customer both financially and emotionally. And somewhere those two lines are going to intersect. Um, so the example I always use is last year I had to buy a new TV for my back deck, right? We mm-hmm. put the pool in, we got the deck, we got the, the fire pit. I had a TV out there for years and it, it finally, it got caught in a rainstorm and it was no more, uh, but I needed a new one. So, so I went to the local Target. Yeah, I went to the local Target and it was, uh, you know, I knew I wanted a 55 inch TV so that I could see it from the pool. Right. Mm-hmm. So I go in there and there's a 55 inch TV for like 400 bucks. And then there's a 55 inch TV for like 800 bucks. And there's a 55 inch TV for like 3000. Right. Those are the three options I'm given. So in that, in that perspective, right? Like if, if I'm looking to put that in my living room, right. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to go for that $3,000 option. Cause it's, you know, my son's playing video games or we want to have the best, best quality on the movies that we're watching. Right. Like I can afford the $3,000 option. But does it meet me emotionally? Do I need the peace of mind of having the best quality, right? right? Well, no, this time it's for my back deck. So I'm going to go with that $400 option because it might get rained on. It might get ruined. And I know that if something like that happens, I can just throw it out and buy a new one, right? So even though I can afford the best, I don't need the peace of mind of having the best quality video outside, right? Yeah. So I in that option, I in that instance, I decided to go with the good. Whereas if it was inside, maybe I decided to go with the best or the better option, right? Yeah. So it's all about where those two planes intersect between the emotional and the financial. That's where we always want to meet our customers. Yeah. And back to the AT&T situation, like they offer those options because they really do want to give you the availability of if you have a have a work scenario where you need 512 gigabytes by all means it's there for you um but if you just need the very minimum then 128 is for you and so i feel way better in that situation just having the choice to say you know what i don't know what the answer is but i'm gonna go with the one in the middle because that sounds safe so And it's super important that we offer options to our customers because they don't know either, but we don't want to say no for them. Like, like the iPhone, for example, Uh, 
I don't need the iPhone, but I wanted the iPhone. You know, I could have gone and got a flip phone, but I didn't I didn't want it. It has the capability to do all kind of things. So I wanted that. And that's the same way with our customers. So the need to offer options is a real thing and it's necessary. So this is another thing that will increase your average job ticket, not because you're trying to oversell the customer, but when you offer three credible options, let's just do an example. The first one that I always think of is a toilet. Like if, you get a call and Miss Jones's toilet is running and you go out there and it's the old style uh, fill valve and it's got the bulb on the end of the arm. You know, the, the very minimal thing you can do is replace the fill valve. And we always add a supply line because we, anytime we turn the water on and off, we, we just replace the supply line. It's just something we do. So the base option or the good option or in if you're if we're comparing it to the AT&T story 128 gigabytes the the lowest thing you could do would be to replace that old style fill valve with a like a fluid master type fill valve and replace the supply line but and we all we always want to recommend what we think and what I would recommend is Miss Jones, it, since I'm here, <clears throat> excuse me, all these components look to be the same age. I would recommend replacing everything in the in the toilet tank, a complete toilet tank rebuild. That way, I don't have to come back next month for the flapper, the next month for the toilet tank bolts and gasket. I can just replace all this while I'm here. Everything can be good as new, and it, I don't necessarily recommend this but i wanted to give you the option of a comfort height elongated toilet a lot of our customers like the fact that they're three inches higher and they are more comfortable and i just wanted to offer that to you as an option and which one of these looks best to you how can we move forward with making this repair today and i think when you do it like that the data shows that you're going to get a high higher average job ticket because you don't want to say no for the customer. Yeah, you no, you definitely don't want to say, you definitely don't want to know. And by, you know, I, I, sorry, I, you default to the uh, AT&T store. I default to the TV situation yeah. because it was like a real world example that I had with like, you know, if I had walked into the target and they had, only one option for TVs and it was $3,000. I'm probably going to walk out of that store without buying a TV and say, oh, oh, let me look on Amazon. Let me go to Best Buy. Let me go, you know, somewhere else. Right. And yeah. let me see what kind of options they have. Cause even, even though I can afford it, it just, it seems like a lot of money for a TV that could get caught in a rainstorm and be ruined in a month, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking actually, of that first TV that I bought lasted three days. Yeah. And if <clears throat> I think if you take the number down from 3000 to 1000, if that's the only number you're looking at, it's going to look expensive regardless of the number. Right. So that's where price perspective comes in. Like you can get this for yeah. um, 800 or let's see, what's a base model TV? $300. You can get this one for 800 or this one for 1900. Um, uh, it's just important to to give three options. And a lot of times I have the conversation that there aren't three options to give. And it, it can be hard to think of options when you're faced with a, with a gas leak, you know? So in a gas leak type situation, repiping the whole system is always an option. It's not one you're going to recommend, but you can, have a flat rate task to repipe the whole system. And you can say to the customer, I don't recommend this, but if you're going to be a lifelong customer, which I hope that you are, at least you'll know you'll have this estimate to go by. If you have multiple leaks, especially water leaks, we, we always give a complete repipe because if this is <clears throat> the first time it's happened, that's great. Maybe it won't happen again, but if we're out here for the third time fixing a water leak, you know, 
it's time to at least consider the possibility of repiping the whole house. So there's yeah. two options right there: fixing the leak, repiping the house. Um, and yeah, well, I mean, you know, and then if they're on well water, you know, what kind of softener do they have? What kind of filtration system do they have? What's causing the issue, right? Let's, you know, I, I tell my guys to find the best option. We really want to find the root cause of the issue, right? So if it's in that situation, it's like, hey, we can make another spot repair. We could repipe the whole house, or we could repipe the whole house and put in a softener system so that your pH is going to be right and it's not going to eat through your copper pipes, right? Yeah. Because um, even if you repipe the house, right, you could repipe it in PEX. There's still going to be brass and copper somewhere, right? Whether it's the supply valves or the supply lines um, or it's the transition fittings or the pieces of pipe coming off the water heater, you know? Yeah. Um, so we always want that best option to be their legitimate best option so that it's like you are not going to have to worry about this for 10 years or more, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, we, we're going to, we're going to try, we're trying our best to solve that root cause. And sometimes, you know, it, it could be the exact same call. And sometimes that's different, right? Like, Hey, plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my million dollar plumber blueprint in it. I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful self-sustaining and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of waste of time and money and failure. Grab your Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. Sometimes we go for, you know, a sewer stoppage, right? And it's like, hey, we're going to try snaking it, doing this, we're jetting it. And it's like, now it's still an issue, right? And now we're going to go to, Hey, we got three more options, right? We could do spot repair where there's a belly or a break. We could remove your house trap and do that, or we could remove your house trap and do a new sewer line to the curb because we know that they have a new tap coming in from the curb. But then it could be the same job three doors down and they don't have a new tap. So now it's going to skew those options to be in like, hey, spot repair, uh, spot repair and remove house trap full new line and remove house trap full new line remove house trap and do a new tap yeah we were having that conversation the other day about when you get a main line stoppage what credible options to offer and another one to throw in since we're mainly talking to plumbers here and we're talking to uh, people who are in the truck for the most part are trying to get their average job ticket up so they can hire somebody to get out of the truck and focus on their business. You know, one of the things to to think about offering when you're out for a main line stoppage is, you know, of, of course the jetter is, is one you want to offer as a best, you know, camera and jetting on that main line. But another one that you can offer in the middle, you know, the good would be clean the main line with the, with the, um, drain machine from the clean out. The second one could be, Hey, while I'm here, you know, a lot of times sinks over time, they, they build up with soap scum and uh, build up shower drains, get hair in them while I'm here. Why don't I clean the main drain, go through and clean all your branch lines, meaning clean out your sinks, clean out your shower drains and tub drains, and then uh, make sure everything's flowing and then make sure the, uh, clean the main drain like that after everything's cleaned in the house. And that makes sense to me because I'm, I'm cleaning from in, in every few months I'm cleaning hair out of our shower drain, hair out of our tub drains. And that's a, that happens. And when you think about it as a technician, what, what is most likely to happen? Sink drains are going to back up. And if you're just out there for a main drain cleaning, if you mention that, they're going to think, man, you know, that that does happen. We have a coat hanger in the closet that we get out every now and again and, you know, yeah. try it ourselves. So so that is that that would make sense to the customer. And I think that's a good idea. And as a technician, a selling technician that is trying to to show the customer things that they that they are most likely to need. Um, you have to think about things like that ahead of time and practice them. Practice them with your with your team, and if you're a person that's just in the truck by themselves, practice it 
in the mirror because you do have to be able to make it make sense to the customer and those options do need to make sense. Yeah. I mean, even if you ask your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, you know, for, Hey, for 10 minutes, can, can we do this, this exercise? Right. And it can be once a week and it's just going to make you more comfortable presenting those options, talking to people, right. It's, it's those interpersonal skills that that's what makes selling easy for some people and real hard for other people. Uh, And it's confidence. It's having confidence in your prices. It's having confidence in your process. Um, Because if you're not confident in it, the customer is going to pick up on that. They're not going to be confident. in. So if if you're going in there and you're like, all right, Mrs. Jones, you know, I came up with your options and, you know, it's going to be X to do this, Y to do that and Z to do that. Um, You know, what, what looks the best for you today? Or you're going in there and you're like, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be like, um, like, like $600, you know, <laughs> yeah, I could just get out of here with a dispatch fee. I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. Whatever, I'll just get out of here. Yeah. What is it? 92. I'll pay you a hundred to get out of here as quick as possible. <laughs> well, I think that is a legit anxiety that we as technicians had. I know I've had it. Like I, I didn't want to have the conversation about price because, for one, we already know that they don't want to spend a dime. They don't want you out there. They don't want to spend any money. But if you can just lean into that as a technician and just look, that's the elephant in the room. Let's just get it out in the open. I realize you don't want to spend any money and I don't I don't want you to have to spend money. But since I'm here, it's probably best that we get everything taken care of that makes sense. You know, if I'm here to clean the main line, the main line's backing up. You've got all these branch lines in the house. They are pro- they are going to back up at some point. So I can just run a snake through them, get them all cleaned out, and then you're less likely to have problems down the road anytime soon. And I'd love to, to tell you about our membership. That can get you a 15% discount today. And then you go into that membership, that conversation, because the conversation is the main thing, just having the conversation. And you got to, you got to get comfortable talking about price for one. They know that you're out there to do something that they're going to have to pay you for. Um, But being able to introduce the membership um, conversation, and that's a, that's a conversation we can have a whole nother episode on, but memberships are super important and everybody loves a discount. And if you can give that, credible discount that makes sense through a membership that's going to get you back out to that customer's house and create loyalty in that customer. That customer has skin in the game by way of paying a membership month, monthly fee to be uh priority scheduled to get 15% mm-hmm. off of their services to not have to pay a dispatch fee to get an annual safety check and also get a water heater flush or grinder pump maintenance either or all those all those things can save a lot of money you know and they make sense yeah and memberships are something that i find when i talk to people about them they're leery to implement it Mm -hmm. um and i don't know i don't know why i don't know if it comes off as salesy or gimmicky or something like that to them um but you know the the thing that i like to say is you know i mean literally everybody offers it i mean do you have Amazon Prime? Yeah. I don't know how much it costs, but I think it's about 120 bucks for the year. That's what it was yeah. when I signed up anyway. That was about a yeah. decade ago, so it could be more. Amazon Prime, $120 for the year or $15.99 a month, right? There's that small incentive to pay up front versus paying on a continual basis, right? So mm-hmm. it's basically the same if you're saying to a customer, hey, you can sign up with me today, right? It's going to be 10% off all the visits that I ever come here for, right? For this small fee for $19.99 a month, $29.99 a month, $39.99 a month, whatever it is. Um, People love a discount. Just like I pay for Amazon Prime for the year because it's a, I mean, it's a small discount. We're not talking about a lot of money here. Right. I'm like, I might as well just pay it all at once so that. I'm not paying more in the long run. Let's face it. Home service companies are a dime a dozen, and Mrs. Jones has many to choose from. Now, it may not be PC, but she does judge a book by its cover. That's why there's Kick Charge, the industry's leading and most awarded branding and truck wrap design agency who has been instrumental in getting home service providers noticed for over 20 years. And right now, Kick Charge is offering a $500 rebate to all Coach's Corners listeners. 
Get more information, go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash kick charge and start getting noticed today. And there's some crazy memberships out there. Like I remember when memberships first became a thing, it was like you could have a membership to like people would send you razors every month. People send you socks every month, a belt every month. They would create your wardrobe and send it to you. So you'd have something to wear every month and you just send it back and just wear something different all the time. Uh, memberships. I could see, I, th- I think there is a stigma like, because you're committing, I think the commitment is where the hesitation is, right? You're committing to something. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you think about it, like our membership is $19.99 and you get priority scheduling, you get 15% off all member, I mean, off all services. The same things that I just mentioned, uh, no dispatch fee, annual, and I'm sorry, biannual plumbing inspection and free water heater maintenance. And and if you just do the math, that's $240 a year. But if I'm in your house and I am giving you our price on replacing the water heater, it'll be this amount without a membership and minus 15% is going to be way more than $240. So I think that it's not that they don't want to save money. It's the commitment. And I understand mm-hmm. that. I just... I'm not customer facing at this point in my career. Yeah. And I, uh, but I, but I do know that when I'm presented with a membership, it's the commitment part of it. And I, and I have to find a way to make that make sense because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, we're not trying to rip you off. We're trying to give you a good deal and we're trying to create loyalty by sharing the, the skin in the game. You know, we're going to give you this, this discount up front, but yeah. we want all your business. And there's really nothing to hide about that. That's yeah. what it I is. I mean, that, that's what the membership's geared towards. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, there, there's the typical loss leader in our industry, right? It's the $99 drain cleaning special, right? Where we're going to get it out to your house. We're going to try and clean your drain for $99. And then we're going to throw a camera down there and tell you it's broken. It's yeah. not that. It's it's really trying to add value to our customers um, and add value to their home and find issues in their home and help them solve those issues while at the same time saving them money and in turn, making sure that they call us next time there's a problem, right? Because, hey, yeah. we gave you a great service last time. You got a discount. You're going to get a discount this time. Um, we really hope you had a five-star experience and we want you to have 10 more of those with us, right? Yeah. I had a thought just now about. But I think the I think the big thing that you hit on. Oh, sorry, my back's hurting me a little bit. I think the big thing that you hit on earlier, and you kind of just skimmed over it, but all of these things that we're discussing is to improve your average ticket. Yeah, because oh, that, that's how you become successful. Is by you know when. I, yeah, the options, the memberships, whatever it is we're talking about, the goal here is average ticket higher. Yeah. Right. And what I what I was trying to what I was trying to remember is that in every situation, a membership should be on one of those options. It should never not be an option. Like mm. one of those options need to include a membership. If not, you know, if a customer likes this this estimate, but that didn't include the membership, hey, we can configure it to include a membership because when we take pictures of everything in your house that pertains to the plumbing system we can look back at your plumbing inspection and say, okay, this is the water heater that we've already been in to look at. We know exactly what to bring. We know what to suggest. We know what steps to take before we even come out there because we've taken a picture of it and we can get you back to your regularly scheduled programming by bringing the right water heater out and and getting you back up and running and we'll be out of your hair. Cause that's what everybody wants. They don't want us there. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's as it pertains to how all these things help Mrs. Jones, but you know, for the guy that's still in the truck or the guy that maybe, maybe he's gotten one or two texts and he's thinking about getting out of the truck, right? The main thing you need, I mean, a lot of guys will throw around the word KPIs, right? Yeah. Um, and they're going to have dozens and dozens and dozens of them. 
I, I focus on like four of them. Yep. Cost per acquisition, conversion rate, call booking rate, and average ticket. If you're doing those four things right, you're gonna be you're gonna be successful. Cost per acquisition is basically how much you're paying to get in the front door of Mrs. Jones's house. Yep. Um, booking rate is how many of those calls that you're paying for you're actually going to. Conversion rate is how many jobs you're going to that are actually paying you to do work at their house. And then average ticket is pretty self-explanatory. So, I mean, just in comparison, when we started MDP, our average ticket was about $425. Um, why are you laughing at me, man? No, because I mean, I'm in the same, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm in the same boat, but my um, guys didn't have the tools that they needed. The not negotiation tools, but the just the the interpersonal tools to explain to the customer and stay in the 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 conversation with the customer yeah. and get over that fear of presenting a price because every price is gonna nobody will I, I, tell me the last time you found somebody that was excited about spending money on plumbing. No, never. It was also that broke fix mentality. They called me because the toilet's running and I have identified that it's the flapper. So we're going to change the flapper. Yeah. Not we're going to say, hey, you know, the flapper and the fill valve and every, that's all kind of the same age. Maybe we should replace all that. Or hey, maybe, maybe the customer wants a new toilet, right? Like maybe they just haven't even thought about getting a new toilet because it's just always been there and it's always worked. But now you go to them and you say, hey, look, you know, these new ones, they're more efficient with water. It's it's higher, so it's more comfortable. It's elongated, so it's more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe when presented the opportunity, that customer actually wants those amenities. So mm -hmm. not only are you shortchanging yourself and your company by not offering them, you're actually shortchanging your customer and not providing the best service because – they don't even know there's another option out there. They think their only option is, oh, let me let me just fix this flapper. Oh, when I redo the bathroom 10 years from now, I'll put it in a new toilet. They don't even know how much toilets cost. Yeah. I have a great story to end on with options. And I should have I should have led with this one <clears throat> because the ATT story, I think it's relatable, but here's what happened to me. The best story I can think of that happened to me with options. So one day, um, I went outside and tried to hit the garage door opener and it just wouldn't open. Have you ever tried to lift like without the, without the torsion springs? Have you ever tried to lift a garage door? Like, no, it is super heavy. Like I couldn't lift it myself. Like I'm not talking about when it's got the springs and it's helping you lift it. It is yeah. freaking heavy anyway. So, um, it wouldn't open and, I had to call the, the garage door company and they came out <clears throat> and the guy was super cool. He, he pulled up and he was telling me, um, was it a, was it a one? Mm, it was precision. I think precision, precision. and a one may own them, but I don't, I don't think a one has any uh, locations around here in Alabama, but I'm sure that'll change <laughs> soon. Um, <laughs> but anyway, like he said, okay, this is what's wrong. And it ended up being, it ended up being a sensor and it's a super inexpensive. Uh, it's the thing that you have to jump over. If you, if you're trying to shut the door and run out, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So one of those was messed up and he said, I can just replace that one and that'll fix your problem. But I want to tell you about these, these rollers. Cause when, when I hit my garage door, you could hear it. It sounded like the haunted mansion. It was just, Oh, yeah. boys because i hadn't done anything i don't know how to maintain a garage door and uh he said listen i can throw these 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 new bearings and these rollers on and i can um put put a uh keypad on the outside so if you ever are without your garage door opener you can just hit the keypad and and do that and i'll replace the the controller by your entry door and you'll have a new opener i mean and that was that was the best option. He had another one. I think it was without the keypad. The, the the better option was without the keypad from the outside. You know how you can just walk up to the side of the garage and type it in? Mm -hmm. So those were my three options. And he said, you know, I have all this stuff on the truck. I can get it done. It'll take me about an hour and a half. And I was like, dude, 
let's roll with the best option because what you're saying makes sense. Like he said, you won't even hear it open. And, um, man, he said, all right, I'll get started. And so I went back inside and I was in there talking to Alice and I was like, dude, we, we're going to get this. And I was, it was a transfer <laughs> of excitement from him to me, to her. And I don't know how excited Allison was about the garage door, but when he got done, <laughs> he's like, okay, Mr. Wally, I just want to show you what I did and make sure that everything is what we talked about. And man, he hit that garage door open and you could see it moving, but you couldn't hear a thing. It was just smooth as silk. Mm. And every time I open my garage door, I think about that guy. And I'm like, that that is what it's <laughs> supposed to sound like when you all Well, that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity. Sorry. Sorry, I thought you were done. But yeah, that's the opportunity no, I'm done. I'm done. with every customer is to is to take their anguish, right? Because they're upset that they had to call you. Something's wrong. They're gonna have to spend money. We could take that opportunity, right? And turn it from anguish to excitement. Yeah. We can take you from being upset that you have to spend money to being excited you have to spend money because you're going to get X, Y, and Z value out of it. Um, and just to, on a, while we close out, um, you know, relate it back to my plumbing business, right? I had a tech, I mean, the most important thing you can do when you're given options is to not prejudge your customer. Um, and that's something that we all struggle with at some point or another. Um, but I had one of my techs, he called me one day and he said, man, I know you tell me not to prejudge the customer, but I'm having a really hard time on this one. It's this little bungalow, blah, 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 blah. And I had no heat. Turns out it needed like a $300 part, right? Mm -hmm. Needed a $300 part to get his heat pack up and running. Whatever. Would have been five or 600 bucks to fix. And he would add his heat back on that day. So that was option one. And then option two was to replace the heater. And then option three was to replace the heater and the water heater with the a combi system. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, that's pretty much our standard options. Well, that top option is like, I mean, it ranges depending on the system, but somewhere between 15 and $20,000. So you're talking about five, 500 bucks or 15,000 bucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> And this was the customer that he was like, I don't want to prejudge the customer. I don't, you know, but I'm, he didn't I'm think the guy was going to go for the, the high one. He didn't think he could maybe swing. Not it. only did the guy go for the high one, he signed for the best option and said, when can you get started? He said, also, while you're here, I've been having drainage issues with my sewer line. So then we start a whole nother set of good, better, best options. And we wind up doing a new water main a new sewer main and a new combi system for this guy. And the, the guy that he didn't think could afford it. The guy that he didn't think could afford the $600 fix wound up spending like 30 grand to get a new heating system, new sewer main and a new water main. So that's awesome. Don't prejudge those customers guys. That's it. We'll close on that. Yep. All right, man. It was great chatting with you. See you next time. But, all right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.